Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Stick your hand in a beam of light, and believe it or not, it will be pushed back with the slightest pressure, just like it was caught in a soft wind. It's not very strong, imperceptible to us, and only detectable with careful measurements. But that force is there. Sunlight doesn't generally knock stuff over on its own, but it is imparting a force to everything it touches. The force of light alone can levitate small objects and even move them around with nanoscale precision. With light sails, this radiation or optical pressure can propel spacecraft across the galaxy. With optical traps and optical tweezers, a beam of light can actually manipulate and arrange biological structures like human cells and bacteria without actually touching them. There's some confusion about how light can do this. How could light have momentum or impose force when it doesn't possess any mass? Light is just a wave and not an object. With no mass, it would be the assumption that light is incapable of having momentum. During introductory physics, everyone learns momentum equals the product of mass and velocity. If light has zero mass, then whatever the velocity, that multiplied by zero should result in zero momentum. Mass times velocity is one way to calculate momentum, but it doesn't tell the whole story. That equation is meant for moving objects with mass and doesn't take into account waves. It's tempting to think of an electromagnetic wave, something definitely massless, to have no momentum. It's easier to convince yourself waves have momentum if you think of waves in the ocean. I think everyone would agree tsunamis are quite capable of acting with force and moving things around. Instead of moving through water, light is a rippling electric field and corresponding magnetic field moving through space-time. When light bumps into something, absorbing, reflecting, or refracting, just like with the case of an ocean wave, it imparts energy and force. Mass isn't required for momentum. Momentum is the result of a distortion in space-time, which is actually caused by energy. Since light has energy, it has momentum. Light bends space-time just like a moving object with mass. Think of gravity which is normally known to affect only massive things, it also bends light in the case of a black hole. Another way to demonstrate that light has momentum is the concept of a solar sail. This is a special membrane designed to catch the momentum of sunlight, just like a wind sail. Solar sails, also called light sails or photon sails, are a method of propelling spacecraft using radiation pressure exerted by sunlight all by itself. A number of space missions utilizing solar propulsion have been proposed since the 1980s. The first spacecraft to make use of this technology was Icaros, launched in 2010. I mentioned before light was made up of waves or photons, rippling electric and magnetic fields hurtling across space-time as fast as the universe will allow. Well, what if you could figure out a way to efficiently capture the momentum of a beam of light? What if you could control the light beam and effectively surf that wave? Imagine using just a beam of light to manipulate objects or levitate them. This seems kind of far-fetched at first. How could such a thing even be possible? Well, there's really no argument about it. Such a thing is definitely possible and has been put into practice for decades. Here is a video from Elliott Scientific. They build lasers and optical systems for industry and researchers. The particle being moved around is actually smaller than most human cells, just a few microns or micrometers. One micron or micrometer or micrometer is equivalent to one millimeter divided by 1,000. That's pretty small. In this demonstration video for their optical tweezers system, a beam of laser light is being directed at the particle and acting like a tractor beam. You can't see the laser light because it's in the infrared and not visible to the human eye. The beam is focused by sending it through a microscope objective. The finest, narrowest point of the focused beam 
is known as the beam waste. This tiny region contains a very strong electric field gradient. This means there is a pull to this spot, like an invisible wind current. Particles are attracted to this region and move along the gradient to the region of strongest electric field, which is the center of the beam. The laser light also tends to apply a force on particles in the beam along the direction of beam propagation due to conservation momentum. This is called the scattering force and results in the particle being pushed slightly downstream from the beam waste. In order to get around this, often a secondary laser beam is used in the opposite direction to counteract the force and keep the particle in position. In order to levitate a particle into the air, the downward force of gravity must be countered by the force from the light. In other words, radiation pressure of a focused laser beam must beat out the downward force of gravity. Small, micron-sized particles, cells, viruses, or even oil or water droplets can be manipulated with optical tweezers. These systems can be combined or multiplexed so that multiple objects can be held and moved around at the same time. The amazing thing is nothing is actually making contact with these tiny objects. This is really the work of a tractor beam. The detection of optical force fields on micron-sized particles was first reported in 1970 by Arthur Ashkin, a scientist working at the prestigious Bell Labs in my home state of New Jersey. Years later, he and colleagues reported the first observation of optical tweezing. He showed that a tightly focused laser beam could hold microscopic particles in stable position. It took a few years, but in 2018, Ashkin was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for light tweezing. In some cases, such as many in biology, touching a delicate structure, a cell or virus, with a material might damage it or interfere with its function. Optical tweezers create a tractor beam to move cells, bacteria, and viruses around without the potential to contaminate, puncture, or alter them. In the late 1980s, Arthur Ashkin and colleague Joseph Zizek demonstrated the first application of this technology to biology, using optical tweezers to trap an individual tobacco mosaic virus and E. coli bacterium. Optical traps have been used to study the actions of various proteins on DNA strands. It has even been used to unfurl and stretch out single strands of DNA, providing the softest force imaginable using just light. More recently, researchers like Carlos Bustamante, James Spudich, and Stephen Block developed optical trap force spectroscopy to characterize molecule-sized biological motors. These molecular motors are everywhere in biology. They are responsible for cell locomotion and mechanical action within the cell. Most optical tweezer setups include the following components. A laser, usually a neodymium yttrium aluminum garnet or infrared YAG laser. You'll need a microscope, optics for steering the laser beam, and a position detector like a quadrant photodiode. This you'll use to measure the movement of the laser beam. Since their inception, researchers and engineers have been very successful in simplifying optical tweezers and trap systems from large, complex monstrosities to smaller, simpler instruments. The cost for a basic system is now only a few thousand dollars. It's amazing how relatively inexpensive and useful these things have become. Turns out, this same tractor beam trick with light can be applied with sound there has been some recent developments of acoustic or sound traps and tweezers. The same force gradient principle can be applied, but with sound, the size scale of the object is much larger. Acoustic force fields are capable of levitating and manipulating objects as large as several inches. This really makes you think of light and sound in a different way. Light has momentum and it can be sailed on just like the wind. I never would have guessed something could get trapped in a beam of light or caught in a sound. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium. <laughs>